Hi, welcome to our video on gross domestic product. Now, this is an important part of the agribusiness sector, and it's one of the introductory topic areas. Agriculture is part of gross domestic product. So we're going to talk about it today from an agricultural perspective, but it is a measure of our entire economy. Now, gross domestic product, also commonly called GDP. And by the way, as I write on the board, make sure you take notes as well. I want you to be an active learner, meaning that when I write something on the board, you write it down as well. I'll give you some ideas on how you should take notes, but if you'll do that, you'll be an active learner and you'll retain the information better. All right, GDP, it's a measure of our economy. And our economy is kind of always a question, how is it doing? And so GDP measures that economy and it is one way that we can see how agriculture contributes. Now, before we get into an example, I do want to write a definition. So gross domestic product, it's a measure of our economy through understanding the market value of, and as I write, you write as well, finished goods that are produced in a year in our or any given country. All right, so that's kind of the definition of GDP and underlining a few key words, uh, we're going to talk about it. The market value. What is that? Well, prices change. Prices are low typically in the past and today prices move higher. We'll talk about that. But market value is what we're after here with GDP. The other thing we're after is finished goods. If you produce a product and it doesn't really make it to its final destination, then it's not a finished good. So we want to track finished goods and they need to be produced in a year and in our country. So that's kind of the, the function of GDP. Now let's talk about GDP and our economy in terms of a simple example. So let's do an example first. And my example is going to be a pond or a lake. And this pond or lake kind of serves as the example. And in my pond or lake, I typically am gonna build it by damming up an area kind of making room for that water to come in. Along with water, I'm gonna have forage in my lake and it helps me build, hopefully a healthier environment. And of course, somehow we're going to funnel or pump, get water to our lake and or pond. And an important thing, it wouldn't be that color, that would be that we might use this to water livestock, but we might also use it to water crops, but we might also use this to find these fish that we're after to catch. So in a pond, it's very much like an economy. It's got a value of finished goods in this pond. And it's not really said in here, but produced is a key word, which means that when you produce something, you have resources like the water like the land itself, even like the fish. These are all resources that we must manage. And sometimes these resources are plentiful. And sometimes, in fact, they get too plentiful in economics. We call that a surplus. You have too many of them. That can be bad for the pond. Too much grass, too many fish, too much water even can overflow and cause problems. That's called surplus. Sometimes these resources are in a shortage situation. We call that scarcity. When our resources of fish and plant life and water go down, causes a whole other set of problems. So resources are are invested and that's what connects to production. Now also we've got finished goods. What are the finished goods of the pond? Well, finished goods might be the water, could be the plants even, or could be the fish. And those are what we would call a product. And so in a pond, you have got products and resources that are balanced. And one of the good questions to this pond, if we're gonna be a good manager, so draw down in your illustration here. Let's say today we want to know how's the pond doing and we'll have an answer for that. But it's important to also go back in the past and let's say 2009 is the past. Got a question of how are you doing there? Between here and there is where we talk about management. So our economy 
is much like a pond. Back in 2009, we knew what that pond looked like. We could count it up. We could take a look at it. Then we count the pond resources and product balance up today, and that's how we can kind of really, in fact, I'll put that down here. That's kind of how we get a real look at how we've been doing when we go from there to there, or at least be able to compare those. So a pond, very much like an economy, it's got resources, got products. GDP is trying to measure, in the pond case, how good's your pond doing today, and maybe even how your pond did back in the past. So that's the definition of GDP. There's an example. Let's continue on so you can continue on down your list, but kind of draw an arrow back to our definition. This whole thing is kept up by somebody called the Federal Reserve. Now it's easy for me to talk about a pond, but the Federal Reserve is a division of our government that tracks the value of these products like the pond, but they track all the ponds and they track different sectors and they try to measure these sectors and how much they're contributing to our economy. And that's done by the Federal Reserve. And what they really do, so you can continue down and an example of the Federal Reserve is going to be like they're looking at one giant store. And in fact, for you and I to talk about it, let's continue down and let's make an example. In fact, let's have a store that we call the store. In fact, in this store, it would be like a store in your town. And this store has got a sign. In fact, let's just make the store have the rest of it. The store's got a roof, probably got a front porch, probably got some parking. Well, obviously you're going to have a front door to get in there. Even window shoppers need to check out the store. So the store is an example of how the Federal Reserve measures our economy of these goods and services, much like measuring this pond. Now, how does agriculture connect to this? Well, farmers and ranchers are going to be our example here. And so a farmer or a rancher or any other sector of our ag economy, they utilize resources. Now, what are their resources? Let me list them out here to connect. Resources are going to be things like land and capital, and there are a few others, but land and capital. <clears throat> so equipment, land, buildings, money is capital. These resources they use to buy feed, seed, fertilizer, chemicals, young feeder calves to grow up, to move to the next part of the supply chain, but they produce a product. And my example is, let's just go with pounds of beef is an example product that this example product gets placed through the store. And what we're curious about is, is we've got shopping carts here, and these shopping carts are where people put their stuff, and we want to measure the stuff going in these shopping carts. A pound of beef is an example of that. And so we end up with a beef at a certain price. Let's say $3 is our price. And we end up with a certain quantity so however much quantity, let's say 10 units, that means that that's $30, and that would be an example of GDP from agriculture. And in fact, this kind of a good, the one that consumers are buying at the grocery store is called a finished good. And that's a typical product put into the grocery store that people buy or any other consumer consumption of goods or services that are produced and the ag sector produces several. That's just an example of beef. And that's called a finished good. In fact, I'm gonna put a number one by that because that's one of the goods that goes into this metric. All right, what's another good? Related to agriculture, we have got tractor companies, any equipment company. And that tractor company puts a tractor out there and let's say the price of that tractor, and again, be hard to get in our shopping cart here, but it's in the store. And that is going to be, let's say a 50, Let's say a $50,000 tractor. So that's five zero thousand dollar tractor. And let's just say that only one of those gets moved. And so that would be a $50,000 good. And that's not called a finished good. That is actually our second type. And that is called a capital good. And that just means it's a big ticket item, thing that's going to last for a long time. It's not going to get consumed like a pound of beef, but it's still a good that the tractor companies produce. Now that tractor, of course, is going to get bought by the farm or ranch, and that's one of the resources they use. But just because they bought it and put it into their farm, that's not what calls it a good. It's when they purchase it from the store that calls it a produced good in that year. And then finally, the last one, back to continuing our ag example, is that we have exports. 
And these exports are produced and shipped and they go through the store. They really don't stop at the store. They keep going because they end up in a store like China. And now China actually buys it. And so it's going to be a traded good. Let's just say that it's a hundred dollar price here. And so it's a hundred dollar good in our list. And in fact, it's not a finished good or a capital good. It's number three and it is called a traded good. So that kind of gives us a list. Now, China, by the way, actually does bring products back to our store like an iPhone and that they produce those and send them to us for a certain amount of money that our farmers and ranchers might also buy in our example. But I will tell you that those are not part of GDP. Why? Because they weren't produced in a year in our country. They were produced in China. That's part of China's GDP, but not part of ours. Okay, let's add all this stuff up. I've got a $30 finish good. I've got $50,000 tractor and I've got a $100 export. So that's 50,000, that's 50,130. So I would say that's 50,130 GDP. Now, this is a special type of GDP, and this GDP is called nominal. In fact, if you want to think of it as a word, it is the now GDP. Nominal GDP is kind of the today term back on our pond. In fact, if you have room there, you could even put that that is equal to the nominal GDP. Now, that's a good thing to know. We need to know what our pond looks like today, but that doesn't really tell me what I'm after because the problem is these prices are kind of messing with me a little bit. If I had the same prices every year, then I could add up GDP every year and see what it looks like. Is it getting better? If I don't have the same prices, then maybe next year, for example, beef goes to $4 a pound. And that seems like a great deal. If you're selling beef, the problem is people won't buy as much. Let's say they buy the same. That's $4 times 10. That's $40 in finished goods. We might say, yeah, we're doing better. But actually, it's only more because the price went up. Quantity is what we really want to make sure goes up too. Prices going up is not bad, but quantity going up with it is what we're after. In fact, if prices go up and quantity goes down, nominal GDP might appear to look good, but we need to really look at it back in time to make sure we really are doing better. So there's another way to look at GDP, and that is not in the nominal term, but in what we call real GDP. Real GDP is going to use a different set of prices like 2009 prices. And real GDP will go back and plug in new prices to kind of handle this. Well, make a little side note over here. In fact, if you'll grab your price box and draw a little arrow away from it, when prices change, we call that inflation. And that's because prices go up over time. And when prices go up, that's called inflation. Is that good or bad? It's probably just part of the normal process. But when we measure GDP, we know prices are going up. So what we do is we take these price things, three, 50,000 and 100. And next year, if they were $6 and 100,000 and $200, we go back and look at the same calculations, but we use 2009 prices. And then you end up totaling that and that's called real GDP. So nominal GDP, I like to call it the now GDP. Real GDP is the same process, but use, use prices back in some other time period like 2009, and that ends up to be totaled to call real GDP. Both of them are important metrics. All right, let's talk now about a little history. How are we as a country? Well, the Federal Reserve, so keep going down in your chart. You might draw a little arrow to it. The Federal Reserve tracks all of these data values, and they put it in what they call the FRED database. FRED stands for Federal Reserve Economic Database. Well, FRED tracks these prices, and I've got a little 
lesson for you here in history, and I'm going to do it with a graph. And in my graph, I'm going to use years down here so I can talk about time. And then I'm going to use GDP or real GDP dollars here. Well, here's what we know using the FRED database. In 1950, we had about $320 billion of nominal GDP using 1950 prices. 2015, we had about $17 trillion in, um, and use this in the bottom of your lesson here, come down and draw this graph, $17 trillion. So way the heck up. And what happened in 1950 when they tracked this, they saw an increase. And then like every pond or economy, we have a back off period. Then there's another increase, back off period, back off period, and then finally we're here today, and that is going to be nominal, I'm going to abbreviate that, GDP. So N-O-M for nominal GDP in 2015. In fact, if we look across this and compare, we're about 55 times better when we think about nominal. However, real GDP, that's kind of what we want to make sure we take a quick look at. So I pulled 2009 GDP using the same years. So in 1950, a loaf of bread is going to cost, let's say, a nickel or a dime or something. In 1950, that cost a lot less, but so many were bought. Well, in 2009 prices, what does that look like? And the answer was $2.2 trillion of money. So that means that you have a value much higher. Now that makes sense. Bread was cheap. Everything was cheaper than 1950, but we still had a quantity bought. So that's going to be looking today in 2009 prices. And we're going to put that later. That's 2.2 trillion. Now the question is, how about in 2015? And the answer was in 2015, we had about 16 trillion dollars in value with real GDP. So it's a little bit shy of the nominal, which that makes sense because 2009 prices are back from 2015. So you're gonna see typically lower. The question is, what happened from here to here? How did we do? Well, you're gonna have the same up and down periods. So you're gonna have the same window, but you're gonna land here and overall, we would say people are eight times better from there to there. Now, you might say things like, well, in 1950, way fewer people, and in 2015, way more people. But actually, in 2009, and then we're going to put here, I'm going to put real GDP, and I need to put the year. 2009 is our year. So 2009, real GDP. But actually, if you look at it here, it was like 14,000 per person in 1950. Today, it is more like 50,000 per person in 1950. So nominal GDP, real GDP, they are measures of our economy. The way they measure our economy is about the market value of finished goods. And that's what makes real GDP an important part because we need to adjust these prices on some base year. And you pick a year and then you can compare. You can compare your pond, what it looked like in 2009 to what it looks like today. These ups and downs, they really have to do with policy because we don't want these ups and downs to happen. But after they happen, there's this big surge that also causes problem. So too little water in the pond, then too much water in the pond, too little water in the pond. It's the same <clears throat> idea. All right, hopefully this video helps you follow the, un the idea, the concept of gross domestic product and how agriculture is part of that total value in our economy. Thanks.